and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to learn about or find out more about a nonprofit organization that was founded here in town called WomanAid, and you'll find out more about that in a moment, um, all about helping people around town and helping others and kind of bringing the community together. Um, but before we begin, I would like to invite you, if you want to give us a phone call tonight, you can always give us a call at 781-270-9199. If you want to email me at any point in time suggesting a future topic or just, you know, if you have a question afterwards that you weren't able to ask during the show, you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. I would like to thank my wonderful single super person crew, Chris Flaherty, who's making sure that everything runs smoothly tonight. And I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for daddy date night. Hopefully everything is running smoothly over at our house. So now I would like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening. We're doing a little bit of high tech uh, semi-virtual. Megan Warsham is a board member of Women Aid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. I am you. one of the eight. One of the thank eight. You. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So can't wait to find out. I think Corey, who is the president of Women Aid. Yes, she is. President, mm -hmm. founder. Yep. I'm not sure of her title. Woman, woman mm -hmm. of many yep. wearer hat wearer of many hats that that's definitely for sure i think she was like my third guest on my show like oh, seven really? years ago almost eight years ago so she did mention she's been here once before so yeah i think it's time i think it's time to revisit so before we get involved in what exactly woman aid is can you give us the brief 10 cent tour sure. where you grew up how you came to burlington um if you didn't grow up here and how you found out about Woman Aid and why you decided to become involved. Sure. Uh, so I grew up in Swansea, Massachusetts, actually. It's about an hour south of here, near the Providence, Rhode Island area. Um, went to school at Boston University, um, started a job at Teradyne, where I'm still at. And that's where I met my husband, who is from Burlington, Stephen Warsham. So we got married back in 07. So I've been in Burlington pretty much since 2006, 2007 timeframe. Um, let's see, how did I get involved with Women Aid? So well, how'd you find out about that? What was that? How did you learn that they actually existed? Yeah. So it was one of those things. Um, I actually found out about it from Corey. Okay. So Corey and I have been friends since my twins. Uh, I have twin boys who are 10, um, since they were about two or three years old. Okay. So I've known her for a long time and, and she had invited me to come to a couple of the potlucks, which we can get into a little yeah, bit later. Real. Um, that Women Aid used to have, and I started volunteering at some of those events um, and really enjoyed just helping people out. It was just awesome to see the community come together and help. And then I became an active part of the board probably about five years ago, oh, maybe okay. five or six years ago. Okay. So I've been, I've been on the board for a little while now, but uh, Corey is the one who kind of pulled me in and kind of showed me, you know, what it was and, and, and how much she helped local I mean, all of the people in Women Aid helped right. the local families in need, and it was just a big draw. It was, it was great. Yeah, Corey has a way of, you know, kind of roping you into things. She's a sweet woman. I love she her does. dearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, had she you... does, but I mean, it's, 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 it's all good things. It doesn't usually rope me into anything and bad, so I can right. never say anything too negative on that front. Now, had you been involved in other nonprofits, other philanthropic activities or is this like your first this was first really go? my first you know first really dive into it i mean i've done a, a volunteer events before i've i've you know raised money before for certain general charities whether okay. it's through um you know cancer walks walk for hunger that type of stuff but this was the first real time of actually helping with a nonprofit and getting and really volunteering for multiple you know, of these events okay. and then becoming part of the board cool now Woman Aid, I think, started. What time did I start doing the show? About 2012, I think. 
didn't you? Uh, yep, we actually started in 2011. 11, so, but okay. Yep, right around the same time frame, yep. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about how it was founded and why it was founded and all that kind of fun stuff? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> so so Women Aid as a whole actually started back in like Washington, D.C. area, mm. and then they had a bunch of different chapters, and that was back in 01. Oh, wow, um, It was okay. just a group of, group of friends just wanted to get together and support local families in need. Um, they actually started to, the other chapters kind of started to sprout up after that. Um, and Corey got involved because she had gone to an event back in Bedford, um, oh. obviously next door to us. And because of the Bedford chapter, she said, wow, I really want to do something in Burlington um, and help Burlington families in need. And that's kind of where it developed in 2011, like okay. I mentioned. But um, yeah, just a group of friends started this whole thing off and kind of grew from there. Wow. Now, were you one of the original friends that kind of got roped into it and then eventually became on the board or? Yeah, I didn't meet her until a couple of years after that. It was probably about 2013 I met her okay. and then I kind of became part of the board more in 2015. So okay. she had already done a couple of these events already and kind of had everything down. Um, so I had joined shortly thereafter. Um, but yeah, so it was a couple of years in before I became part of it. Okay. Now, first I want to talk about how you identify the families that actually need the help. Um, and then after that, I'd like to talk more about how you help them. Sure. So how do, how do you identify? Is it just word of mouth or do people come and contact you? You know, how, how does that yeah. work? Yeah, so it's, it's a little, it's a couple of different ways actually. I mean, the first one is the word of mouth. I mean, um, so we have eight members of the board um, that work on Women Aid and anybody can contact any of the eight board members um, and, and, and say that they, you know, they're looking for some help or they have somebody that might need some help. Um, so that's one way is word of mouth. It's probably our most popular way of, of okay. um, attracting and finding families that need help. Um, after that, we have, you know, local food pantries who would contact us. We have guidance counselors, um, social workers. I mean, that's typically how it happens at this point. Okay, because I'm thinking, you know, again, seven years ago when I first talked to Corey when she was on the show, it seemed to be like families where some tragedy struck, like some one of the parents was diagnosed with cancer or somebody lost their job or something. Now, is it that kind of structure? Because you mentioned like food pantries yeah. contacting you. Is it mm -hmm. still like individual families or do you help groups or, you know, other organizations? Yeah. So how does, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, typically I would say it's either families, it's individuals. Um, that contact us. I don't know about other like groups of people unless you're okay. kind of considering it a family at that point. Um, but it's still along those lines where it's somebody like you mentioned in time of crisis. It could be you've lost a job. You could have had a fire that destroyed something in okay. your house. Um, uh, any kind of illness could be a death in the family. You just need kind of support from that as well. And anything where, that is a time of crisis for a family. Now, again, you know, I'm going back ancient history. Yep. Um, when I when Corey had first come on here, you mentioned the potlucks. And I do want to yes. talk a little bit more about those potlucks. But before it seemed like, um, oh, Megan has a friend who whose spouse just was diagnosed with cancer. So Megan wants to have a fundraiser potluck. Mm -hmm. Now, there was always like that sponsor where yep. you were willing to do it. Now, is that still the case where if, somebody approaches you, they're kind of coordinating the fundraiser through Women Aid or how does... Yeah, it, it does, it's, it's not as much as that anymore. I mean, it used okay. to originally be, we'd have, you know, families that'd be willing to volunteer their home and, and people would come in for those potlucks. Um, I don't know about a, a host family per se, but yes, they would be a family that would okay. want to work with, with a family in need. Um, nowadays, it's more of a, hey, we have somebody who has, is in this situation, they'd really like some help we would have fundraisers that would be pretty much starting to line up anyway, and then we would put families with a particular fundraiser. So you don't need really a, a host family anymore. Okay. It's more of a, we have a fundraiser that we have coming up. We think this family would be great to, to work with that fundraiser. Um, okay. And then we would hold the event and the fun, 100% of the proceeds would go to that family. Okay. Now, when you first started, we talked about these potlucks. So basically, yeah. The structure of the potluck was you invite all your friends and have them come with something to share, but then also a gift card of like yeah. from either mm -hmm. a, a grocery store or gas or 
something and everybody would be social and eat all the food and then the family <laughs> would go away with the gift cards. What are some of the other fundraisers that you do now? I mean, do you still do the potlucks? I know right before we started recording tonight, um, you had mentioned another fundraiser that you had about a week ago. So tell yeah. me about all the different different <laughs> styles so there, of fundraisers. There's a, and there's a lot. <laughs> um, what are your favorites? Or? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the one we just did recently last week, a whole bunch of flowers um, was great. And actually, um, had, we had a flower arranging virtual party um, where they gave you all of the supplies. They had um, a FaceTime, I mean, Facebook Live meeting, and you can actually oh. learn how to assemble flowers. Um, I can honestly say that I, I am I'm an engineer by trade. <laughs> I, I am not artistic at all, and I had a blast. So we've had, um, we have a couple more virtual events coming up that are also arts and craftsy, which I'm looking forward to. Um, we've had events with Primrose um, School where oh. they, um, in the past, they, they had ice cream socials. Oh, that sounds um, delicious. So they would have that on the weekend, and they would have, this was uh, pre-COVID, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. um, where they would have a band come in and face painting and other stuff. Um, so we've had events at Primrose. We've had uh, yoga events. I know, I believe it was Roots at one point had a rooftop yoga event a few years ago. So that was a lot of fun. Wait, did you say rooftop? Um, yes, it was back in the district. I forgot which building it was on, but they had an okay. event where it was, it was on the um, roof. It okay. was awesome. On the roof. That sounds pretty cool, yoga. actually. Yeah, that was, that was absolutely fun. Um, we also had a Bikram studio, had um, hot yoga. We did an event there as well. And I know I'm going to forget all of the events we have because we've done a lot over the years. Um, now you mentioned you had some have, coming up. Yeah. So what are some of the ones that are yeah. coming up? Absolutely. So there's a couple. So we have a couple um, virtual craft events. Um, one is for a, a cheese board, which I can always forget the name. I think it's, I forget what the special name of that board is, but there, there's a, there's a virtual event for that. Um, we also have a, another virtual craft event. And I think the first one's November 7th. The second one is November 13th, oh. where you'll be um, making a, a, a box. You can put different wooden flower arrangements in, so you can design that as well. Um, another one we have coming up, actually, through a whole bunch of flowers as well, is um, we have a, a wreath um, that you could purchase through a whole bunch of flowers. Okay. Um, I'm looking to see the, I think it's, um, that's coming up in, I think by the 27th, they want you to order it. Um, I'm looking really quick to get the exact <laughs> Now, if somebody wanted to find oh, now I got it. Um, oh, Melissa okay. O'Dowd is running it. Um, she's helping us, and, okay. and I can explain that. So we've had a, a couple situations with fundraisers that we've had people outside of Women Aid offer to host oh. a fundraiser okay. as well. Um, for example, Fallon Woodbury got a couple huge raffle items, and on Facebook she holds raffles for us. Oh, cool. um, and we had a virtual scavenger hunt um, that that Jamie Gretzler had actually oh, set up and run. Tell me more about that because I think I remember reading about that. Yeah, I yeah, couldn't it was make awesome. it, but I do remember, like hearing about the the. It was like drive around and find the clues. It, it or something. was, and so it was. It was during the summer, and obviously in the middle of COVID. And actually, it was probably earlier in the summer, should I say? And it was the middle of, of COVID and trying to keep social distancing. So everybody drove around to different sites in their cars, and they would have to find a particular item around town mm. that kind of met the, met, matched the description of what the scavenger hunt was. And I heard a, a lot of positive feedback <laughs> about that as well. Just kind of an impromptu. Somebody wanted to help out Women Aid, started up this fundraiser. Um, all the proceeds, you know, um, went to help the COVID fund that we're trying to, to, to run and so forth. But, um, but it was, yeah, it was a blast. People had a lot of fun with it. Cool. Now, you just mentioned the COVID fund. Can you tell me a little uh, bit yes. more about that? You know, yes, I, yeah. I told you I had my notes, but I'm the queen of tangents. So we're just going to talk about, you know, You everything. know what? Uh, I, I am. <laughs> My friends always call me, they, they always say I had nonsensical non sequiturs. I would always scroll off in these different directions all yes. the time. So don't Girl worry. Girl after my own heart. Um, yeah. Exactly. So the COVID. So the COVID. Yeah. So COVID. Fund. Yeah. So this, obviously, we're, we're in a very difficult time, you know, this year, as it obviously started back in March, where um, we had a lot of requests from families that were looking for help. So, so we have a couple of different methods here um, that people can donate and, and, and basically do an adopt a family where we would um, look to get you know, funds raised either through PayPal, through Venmo, and you could adopt a family and give a $250 you know, grant or, or money towards um, somebody who, who needs it in this tough time with COVID. Um, so we have you know, given out $30,000 to 90 families to help wow. with this. So obviously it's been a lot of requests for this. 
Um, we're obviously um, still, we're still getting a couple of requests a week for this, but it's something that we could, we could always use more donations to kind of help these, these families out. Um, and, and so basically you could, you could give gift cards, you could give um, the, the 250 for donation and that would go to a family who needs it. Okay. Um, so it, it, that's what we're really trying to do is try to raise money, money for COVID right now, in addition to any other families who need it. Now, just remind me again how someone sure. would donate. I mean, they may or may not know somebody on the board. I'm sure you don't yeah. walk around town saying, I am a board member of Women Aid on my <laughs> shirt. So uh, not, not yet, but maybe <laughs> Cora will make me a pin. You never know. I, I, I'd be more than happy to wear it. Um, no, so so we have a couple different ways that you can you can reach out to us. So on, um, we have a, a, a website that you can um, go right to, and, and there's PayPal on the website. You can make a donation through there. Um, we also have Venmo. I think it's Burlington uh, underscore Luminate at Venmo. Um, we can, it's on the uh, Facebook page as well, so you can get it there. Um, and then obviously you can, you can um, send a check to any of the board members and we would we'd okay. gladly put it in a fund in order to be able to go to a family in need. But Venmo, PayPal through the website, um, and obviously you, you can send something to the board members as well. Okay. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Venmo nowadays, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think I'm still afraid of Venmo, you know, like, you know, it, it's really nice to, it, it, we had the, the virtual craft event, which is coming up in November okay. and, I, and I saw it was coming up and told friends about it and I was like, how can we pay for it? Just go right through Venmo go and you Venmo. get in and out in five minutes, if that. So it's, it's been great. It's been a great, um, way for us to, to get money and get funds. Okay, now you mentioned like the the flower arrangement, uh, flower yeah. arranging that was last week. How did people get the supplies? Did they have to go to was it a whole bunch? They did have to go to a whole bunch of flowers. Okay. Um, the way that they did it is they basically had kind of said you can come, you know, the day before the event or the day of the event. Okay. You registered it the Monday before the event was on a Friday night, so you could pick it up Thursday or Friday. Okay. Um. As someone from experience, I would recommend anytime you get flowers, try to get it the day of the event, not the day before. My they flowers were still droopy. great for a week. They were absolutely great for a week. Um, but um, get to get it the day of the event is always better. Um, but yeah, we, you could pick it up on site. You could okay. pick it up on site. Okay. So back to the families that you're helping. Do they have to be Burlington families or could they be in the surrounding areas or have some kind of connection? Sure. You don't want to say no to these people, but are there yeah. limitations on who you're trying to help first, like a priority priority or something? Sure. Um, well, we're trying to help Burlington families and the surrounding areas first, especially Burlington. Um, we typically don't branch out too far outside that area. Okay. Um, because obviously Burlington is, is, is where we're really trying to support at this point. Um, the exception I would say is if you're from Burlington and moved away, um, we tend to also help out as well there as best we can. Once we're starting to get further out in that area, we don't want to leave anybody high and dry without any kind of help. So we, we try to give them recommendations of, of either local charities or local support oh, systems okay. in that particular area. Uh, I think we had a family out in, in Worcester that had contacted us asking for help, and we kind of pointed them to to um, resources out in that particular Worcester's direction. <laughs> it's it's a little far. It's a little far. I, we appreciate that they that they wanted to reach out to us, but um, uh, we try to stick closer to home for okay. that type of stuff. And and I think you'd ask the question about restrictions. I mean, the only real restriction we have is that we try to help a family once, unless there's some kind of extreme circumstance. Okay. Um, where they really needed help again. Um, but for the most part, otherwise, we'd have to keep helping the same families over again. And unfortunately, as much as I would love to say we have unlimited funds, uh, we do not. So right. we do have to um, try to keep it to one one um, one fundraiser or, or, okay. or one set of um, help at a time kind of thing is what we're kind of limiting it to. Okay. So is there like an average amount per fundraiser that your goal is? Because I'm just thinking, um, of, you know, some families, oh, well, this fundraiser only made $150, but this fundraiser made 1000 And 
you know. Yeah, typically I, I've said for a lot of our fundraisers we've been doing is probably between the thousand and two thousand range. I mean, oh, it, it varies. Nice. I mean, it depends on on the families. Obviously, if you have a, a pretty well known family that has a lot of support for this system in Burlington, and that everybody comes to the event, oh, okay. uh, you can obviously it, it it helps, and you can obviously raise a lot more money. But in general, it's probably right around that thousand to two thousand mark is what we typically raise for an event. Now, in the past when we had the either the potluck or we would have uh, a primrose event or something else okay. um, we would do one event per family but nowadays with the virtual events um, we tend to do two per family for that okay. so it's not, I shouldn't say just one but we bucket two for the family and say that's the fundraiser oh, okay. um, just because virtual you tend not to get as many heads obviously as if you would in person so okay. I would say that's that's a big difference nowadays uh, we're doing a lot of smaller events instead of the, the bigger events I mean we used to have um events at, at primrose that could have you know hundreds and hundreds of people oh, well, that well, everybody loves ice cream the course so. of the day yeah and you can't everybody go wrong with ice yeah. cream we had an event at american legion that we had um uh 100 150 people oh, at, wow. at some point over the span of a few hours for okay. that so it depends on nowadays like i said we like to bucket two events oh, okay. per, just because of the smaller turnout with the with the virtual events okay so now that, you know, I know we touched upon this a little bit with COVID and you do offer these grants for people affected yep. by COVID, but are you still doing like the crisis management fundraisers or? Sure. Yeah, we actually are still doing both. So we okay. have COVID, which we do, and I forgot to mention this too, is that we do the, the 250 grants to families. Uh, we also do Meals on Wheels or, or meal delivery service oh, as well, if we can okay. incorporate that in as well. I, that's why I, I forgot to mention that. And and, and for some of the, the companies we've worked with for that, Boston Salads and Prepared Foods, Ava's Little Kitchen, Healing Meals, um, they've helped with with serving meals as well. So it wasn't just the, the donation, it was that as well. Oh, um, okay. So I, 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 sorry, I forgot to mention that. No, but, that's okay. You know, got yeah. a whole hour. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got time. We've got time. So... Yeah, so we do both. I mean, we have the events coming up, the craft events for a particular family, um, and then we, which I think we're still ironing out the, the details on that. Um, okay. And we have um, the COVID. We're always accepting donations for that. That's kind of its own separate. If we okay. have a, a, a raffle, if we have scavenger hunts, or we have something along those lines, we'll always, in addition to just a general adopt a family, uh, we accept those as well. So it's kind of almost the COVID's going on, and we also still have the, okay. the individual events as well. So it's really both. Oh, okay. Now, you mentioned, like, um, Boston salads and... Mm -hmm. um, and prepared are, foods are often yeah, the, the same. Yeah, the prepared foods um, and the flower shop. And how mm -hmm. do you get these business partners? Do mm -hmm. you seek them out, or do they say, hey, we want to... We've heard about the great work Woman Aid is doing. We want to help you out doing this fundraiser. How does that partnership or relationship? Sure. So a, get a couple different. Yeah, I was gonna say. So it's a couple different ways, really. Um, over the years, we we tend to try to get a lot of raffle donations for a lot of events. We we work with a lot of small businesses on that front, um, reaching out to them, asking for donations so they're aware of who we are. Um, we have some companies like Total Wine has been really great to us okay. that they've, they've come and reached out to us a bunch of time. We've had wine tasting events there. Um, a whole bunch is another one we've been dying to work with for a long time. And then we finally got that, you know, organized this past week with the, um, with the bouquet arrangement. Um, and I think the biggest thing is we, we recently just joined the, the, the chamber of commerce in Burlington oh, really? and that oh, has cool. given us a lot of visibility, um, okay. to a lot of local businesses and, and we partner with them a lot. So they're aware of who we are. Um, we, we've gone to some meeting board meetings there. Um, so that's a, that's a huge resource for us oh, now, unfortunately that the chamber has not been meeting as much recently with, with COVID, but, um, hopefully we can, we can get, <laughs> um, those meetings and everything else really back running again, but okay. but it's been a it's been huge for visibility for us. It, it it really has. So it's kind of the us reaching out to businesses, businesses okay. being aware of us, reaching back out to us. Plus the the chamber has been huge. Now you mentioned, you know, we've we've talked about the business relationships. You've mentioned mm -hmm. that sometimes like the food pantries reach out to you, um, yep. but what about like? schools or does Leahy Hospital reach out to you or do you have any any relationship with like community 
departments or something? Yeah, with some social work we do. Um, okay. And but not as much the hospitals because I don't I don't know if that's kind of a patient yeah, you know I, kind of thing. So okay. typically it's it's really through the, the word of mouth and the social workers and food pantries. That's kind of where we gear most of it towards. Okay. Um, not as much towards the hospitals and and schools with guidance counselors. Again, um, a lot of the board members have have kids in the school systems. Whether okay. it's um, I'm I'm at Francis Wyman. Corey is was it Fran? Well, is it Francis Wyman in the middle school? Um, Victoria Nguyen is in, in Pine Glen. So they're in a bunch of different school communities. So we're, we're aware to a, a, of some of the situations in the okay. different school systems. So we can find out through, through that route as well, but it's more of, again, that word of mouth. The word of mouth thing. Okay. On the board and, and work with them. Now, speaking of word of mouth, and we've talked about mm -hmm. the fundraisers, are there any other types of outreach that you do? Like, you know, if there's a family that's having some kind of an emergency, like a cancer, um, mm -hmm. dealing with cancer, do you have, you mentioned the Meals on Wheels, but is there also like yep. housekeeping or lawn maintenance or any other kind of outreach that you're working with or doing for the families? We haven't done that specifically at this point, at least uh, more more of which we need a particular item. We need a particular okay. thing. We've had families come up and say, look, we, we lost everything in a fire. We need clothing. We need shoes. We, we can go out and help and reach out for that as well. Okay. Um, so it's not just a I financial, really, here's a check. Oh, it's, no, not necessarily. Okay. I mean, we, we, we've also done gift cards to, to gas station. I think you mentioned that a little earlier, gift cards to different um, grocery stores and so forth. Uh, okay. I think we had a family who was traveling a lot into Boston because their, their son was going for cancer treatment. So we'd given them a bunch of gas cards to be able okay. to drive back and forth into the city just to try to help out a little bit there. Um, but, but that's where it's geared more towards. Yeah. Okay. Now, if somebody wanted to volunteer for woman aid, do you accept like straight volunteers or do you have to have like a partnering organization or how, how, what types yeah, I mean, of volunteer yeah. positions or opportunities are there with Women Aid? Uh, absolutely. I mean, any, any event's open to the public. So anybody can come and help out at any point in time. They can reach out to us um, through through Facebook, uh, through uh, our website and so forth. Actually, a, a couple of the newer board members um, who came on board within the last you know year or so started off as volunteers and, and kind of helped out just coming to different events, finding out what it's about, um, helping out. It's it's not as easy with the volunteering, obviously, in a virtual world, but when right. eventually we go back to actually having things in person again, okay. um, obviously any of our events are open to the public. We love to have help. It could be helping out with, with, with helping us getting raffle items or, okay. or donating something for raffle items as well, um, in addition to actually physically volunteering at an event. Because so I'm it's, also it's, thinking it's a couple different ways. You know, like administrative, you know, trying to keep track of all of the families and sure. track of all of the donations. Sure, that would be, yep. and thank yous and all it gets kind of complicated yep. running running a nonprofit. Uh, yeah, exactly I was actually just gonna go there running a nonprofit is a fun time especially when you have um, one of one of the board members is, is a lawyer and helps out as well so well, that's helpful it, it, it's very helpful this the the financial dealing the paperwork dealing with okay. all of that um, but if somebody wanted to help volunteer with that, I'm sure we would we would not turn down any additional help in that area either. Okay. Um, but yeah, any any of that support would be great. So I'm you know I'm just kind of looking at my notes and a lot of this stuff we've covered. So you know forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but oh, like no, um, if someone wants to donate to a family, do they have to do it necessarily through a fundraiser, or mm -hmm. can they just make a flat out donation? Oh, they absolutely can make a flat out donation if they would like to. Um, they can, they can again, Venmo, um, they can PayPal, they can send money um, directly. Um, it's probably to Corey Barkley. Uh, she lives at 70 Anna, Anna Road. So if you wanted to mail a check over to her as well, and just obviously as, as long as you have a particular family in mind, you know, for okay. an upcoming event or just in general, you can actually just write their names in just so we kind of know who to target it with. Um, you could absolutely do that. And, and I think the one thing it brought up too is we do have these events and, and if you miss the event but still want to make a donation, we can accept it up for that family up to about a week after the event, and, oh, okay. and still it would go to that family in need. So um, while we'd love to get everyone at every single event, I know right. that's a difficult thing to do all the time. So um, you can still make donations up to a week later, and it will still get to that family. Okay. So that's like the, the time frame there is like a, yeah, a that's finite. The Leading up to the event and then up to right. a week after the event is kind of what we're kind of gearing towards. Yep. Now roughly how many – events 
has Women Aid been doing like the past couple of years? Because I remember, you know, back when I first talked oh, with terrific. Corey, back mm -hmm. in, you know, 2012, 13, wherever it was, mm -hmm. it was like one every quarter, so like four mm -hmm. a year. And it sounds like you're doing multiple each month now, so. Yeah. Is it yeah. planned so that way, or is it just when an opportunity arises, or how does that work? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of both. I, I will honestly say the summer we try, we try not to do a ton of events only because of the fact that people are usually on vacation. They're usually out. So it's a little trickier during that prior period of time. And obviously uh, we'll do stuff leading into the holidays, but right around the holiday times, we try to avoid that. I would say typically uh, um, pre-COVID, we would do three to six events a year. It, it feels like we're probably doing more like eight a year. Um, so not quite every month, but closer okay. to that just because we're doing double events in some scenarios in order to help a family out um, as opposed to a single bigger event. Okay. Um, so, so I guess it, it depends on the year this year. We probably, we did a lot more. Uh, I think we did around eight maybe. Oh, wow. um, so it, it, flatbread's another event that that's not, actually, I forgot to mention that one too. We do have local businesses when it comes to restaurants. Yeah, plenty of time. They'll donate. Megan, there's yeah, plenty of time. So. Yeah, it's one of those things <laughs> when it pops in my head because I, because I, there's a lot of great businesses and sponsors that help us and okay. I want to make sure I get them in there. Um, that, now, do you have uh, a yeah, running list helpful. where like if somebody like me who never goes any any events but it's like oh <laughs> I want to help one of the businesses that helps women aid so obviously there's flatbread you know and we've mentioned yeah. a few others is there like a running yeah. list on your Facebook page or something and to be honest with you I don't know if we have a running list yet but I know we have the list so I think that's an excellent excellent idea to pop that up on the Facebook page to be honest with you um, and something we should absolutely look into and do because you're right between uh, Total Wine, um, Whole Bunch, uh, Flatbread, um, a couple of the yoga studios um, there's it just it feels like endless of how much help we've gotten so yeah we should definitely that's a definitely great idea and something we should look into yeah i've just been list listening to too much public radio and you know oh <laughs> if you sponsor yourself oh yeah we used to sponsor eight you know eight years ago but people still remember so i'm just yeah you know people want no, to absolutely. help and they just need to know where to go yeah and i think that that's why we, we, we when anybody is holding it we try to really encourage you know, go support your local business, help out your local business. These are the ones that have helped us along the way. I mean, that's what the, the Burlington Chamber of Commerce really stands for too, okay. is working with the local businesses, um, support them uh, and, and so forth. So yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's definitely a great idea and something we should really look into doing. Okay. Um, I think we touched upon this a little bit, but like restrictions, are there any, Yeah. you know, what kind of limitations are there, is there like a, a checklist of criteria that families need to meet in order for women aid to help them? Well, I mean, really, when we get a, a name of a family, usually it's from somebody that we happen to know. That, so know. typically okay. we, if, and if we don't, we tend to, we ask for references that we just want to contact just to, just to kind of check in and make sure everything, um, it, I don't want to say is valid because that doesn't sound right, but just right. make sure that it is truly a family that is in need. Um, okay. cause again, we, as much as I'd love to say we have endless funds, we do not, but, um, for the most part, it's, it's just through friends of friends through the board members. Um, if it is through uh, a social worker or through the food pantry, okay. they obviously know the person. So it's something that, that we're getting, um, information on. If it's somebody that we don't know as well, we tend to use references to kind of touch base and call them and make sure that everything, um, um, that it makes sense and everything kind of jives. Uh, so yes, we we do do you know a little bit of due diligence on our part because um, while we'd love to help every single well, person in right. there, um, we don't turn many away. But you know, I mean, there's always a possibility to do so. So, uh, but we do check into it a little bit. Now, if somebody comes to you with mm -hmm. a need, does there have to be a fundraiser to attach to that family? Not necessarily. I mean, we tend to do a lot of those $250 grants, um, $500 okay. grants, depending on, on the circumstance. Um, I, I think we, we, we have, you know, on occasion, a slush fund that, you know, we had these huge major events between um, the She Devils and um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce Gala that we get some, fun, uh, okay. some fundraisers in so that we can do these type of smaller donations so that we have some families that just want to remain anonymous, that, that just would like some help, but don't want a big 
to do with a fundraiser. So we have helped out in that way as well. So it doesn't need to be tied to a fundraiser. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be by any means. Now you mentioned she devils. Is that like uh-huh. the the mom hockey team or? It, t- it is. Tell me more it is about the Burlington that. mom hockey team. Tell me more well, about so, that. Well, um, so they they every every year for our, oh man maybe five, five years, 10 years. I'm not exactly sure of the amount. Um, wow. They would hold an event every April. And in that event, they would give um, a percentage of the proceeds to women aid. So we would help with, with raffle tables. We would go to, you know, help out with the event and so forth. And it was, it was a big thing. I mean, the hockey community in Burlington is very, Huge. very strong. I, I will definitely say that. Um, so they were great with us, you know, and, and huge in helping us. I know that they had stopped doing it for a little bit. Um, and obviously with COVID, we didn't have any kind of event this year for that. Right. Um, but yeah, they were, they were great giving a percent of the proceeds to us. They used to have a big party afterwards. Um, now, but she- anytime you can watch hockey, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> so now the She Devils did their own mm-hmm. fundraisers and a portion yep. went to me, or were they established yep. for the sole purpose of Women Aid? No, they were, they, they had their own set of fundraisers oh. and we would, we would work with them and we would get a percentage of the proceeds every year. Cause they had that one major event every year called the hockey game that they played okay. with the party afterwards. So, um, they were great at helping us out, especially in, in the earlier days of women. They were huge helping us out there. Cool. Now I'm also thinking, you know, we've mentioned a lot of the raffles and I'm having like a mental block where when I think raffles, <laughs> I think of like silent auctions. Now, mm-hmm. are they like a silent auction thing or are they just online or tell me more about how you structure the raffles? So it, in pre-COVID days, uh, we would actually have raffles at a lot pre-COVID of Pre-COVID and COVID. Yeah. I know that there, there's that that balance there. So in the pre-COVID days, especially um, some events like the, the Primrose event um, for the She Devils event, um, for some other fundraising events like that, we would actually have raffles kind of out. You'd buy your tickets and you can, you can put the tickets in for the raffles. Oh, okay. um, with, with some of the um, flatbread, for example, we used to have a couple of raffle, raffle items um, okay. when we had the flatbread night where, you know, percentage of the proceeds would go to women aid. Um, we have done um, online raffles as well. You know, nowadays it's a little more popular to do that type of thing just because of the fact that, well, you, COVID. you don't have a ton of other options there. Right. So, so we've done both. Um, so it, it, it's geared more towards you buying tickets to get um, an opportunity to, to win something is more of what we do for that. Now, we've talked about how, well, we've touched upon how Women Aid has changed. Mm-hmm. How is there like a measurement of how they've changed over like the past five years? Has the board grown? Has it mm-hmm. remained the same? How you do, have you always done the same number of fundraisers? Have the types of um, fundraisers changed? Yeah, the, the types have changed. Um, the the visibility has definitely gotten a lot bigger. Um, obviously, when we started, we were doing more of a potluck at people's houses and everything else. Now we have businesses reaching out to us as opposed to before we were doing more reaching out to them. Okay. Um, so that's been a huge difference. The board has been pretty steady at eight or right around eight for, okay. for a few years now. Um, we definitely need need the, the help from that standpoint of we need all eight people on the board because we each kind of specialize and okay. a little different. Um, but that's been about the same. But I, I'd say the visibility has been a huge difference over the last five years. Like, uh, if you had told me five years ago, we'd have, you know, a whole bunch really, you know, trying to get multiple events with us or we were trying to get, okay. you know, total wine being, in, you know, trying to help us so much, I, I would not have believed you. So now having businesses come to us has been, has been a little bit more of a help. Uh, the chamber is another thing. We have a we we network a lot more. We can okay. we know a lot more um, different businesses through that as well. That's been a huge difference for us. Um, being an official nonprofit definitely helps. You okay. know, with from the standpoint of it's always good to have that. Um, but in terms of of growth, it's really just the visibility. I would say at this point um, for the number of events. Uh, I would say the events have changed. We seem to be doing um, bigger events, meaning okay. that, you know, we have the gala that we're a part of. Um, Primrose has grown over the years. Um, we've had, you know, a lot more virtual events recently, obviously. We've mm-hmm. had um, a, a lot different events involving other businesses. Cold Water Creek was another one. We, oh, okay. on, in January, they they let us, you know, hang out in the store and, and, and we got, you know, 
sails there and brought food brought food into cold water which they were great with it and, and, and a nice mm-hmm. glass of wine and, and so we got into a local business that way so they get um, some obviously some some good visibility and we do as well okay. so it's 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 definitely been a fun time you know working and, and, and helping out you know people and working with these businesses thinking of how you've changed I just kind of triggered in my mind so Stream of consciousness, if you don't know the answer, we can just yeah. move right along. But no, I'm thinking back 10 years ago when you first started or eight years ago, however it was, there had been other woman aides around in the country. You had mentioned that it started in D.C. and there was one that yep. Tori was introduced to in Bedford. Have you ever still compared yourself to them, to the other women aide? branches um have you ever gotten together with other you know emailed any kind of communication with other women aid groups branches around yeah um i personally i haven't um i i you know the funny thing is is i i don't i don't i haven't done it recently i don't i don't think Corey has as well um it's not that we wouldn't i think we're just so focused on trying right. to help you know our community and our stuff that we haven't um, reached out as much to them. Okay. So it would be interesting to actually see their viewpoints and see what kind of stuff they've been working on, but we haven't done as much of that to date, but it would definitely be an interesting idea to talk to some of them. Just thinking, you know, how everybody's changed. Now, yeah. if you start at the same point, some people go this way, some people go that way. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to, you know, theorize. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's to get diff- and it's also just to get different, different viewpoints. I mean, it's always good to see um, different communities and kind of how they're into, maybe they have certain things that they used and they've tried that we should okay. really look into the whole virtual events. Obviously is a whole new thing for everybody these days. Um, and, and trying to get that up and running. Um, actually there's another event that we had thinking, speaking of virtual is we had, um, I, or what is it called? The, um, the trivia nights. We had one oh, of those, okay. um, back in, back in June. And that was a, a lot of fun where there was somebody that, you know, volunteered their time and hosted a, a trivia night. Um, now can you do so that, that with Facebook live kind of or how does, how does a, how does a virtual trivia night work? And is uh, it I, Zoom? I, I is can it... remember correctly. Yeah. If I can remember correctly, cause, um, that night I had to cut out of that, that okay. trivia night a little bit early, but, um, we had a, a, I think it was either a zoom conference or some kind of conference room and it was, okay. They started off in the main room, and then you would spin off into smaller room with your team, and oh. then you guys can kind of meet virtually with the team, and then submit your answer to the to the one person who was kind of overseeing it. Oh, so wow. you met with everybody to begin with in one conference room, and then you broke off into kind of breakout rooms. Okay, the breakout rooms. And, okay. and actually, you know, talked and submitted your answers, and then submitted it back to the main person in general, and you got your points that way. So it was, oh, cool. it was definitely a unique experience. And yeah. that we had kind of figured out because we had we had talked to a couple friends and said, oh, we did trivia nights okay. you know, um, virtually and raised a ton of money doing it. So it was one of those Why things, not? not reaching yeah. out to a, a women aid community, but a okay. different you know nonprofit community and going, wow, that's a really good idea. Really cool. We should try that. So um, any so, and reaching out to any other nonprofit is never a bad idea because they have okay. very interesting takes on how to do stuff. Right. Now, have you had any thoughts about doing another trivia night? Everybody loves um, trivia. You know? Well, I, you know what? I think I think so, and I think the biggest thing too is as the weather turns and people are going to be more, you know, not that people are going out a ton of places, but you can still move around. If you're more apt to be inside, a trivia night again would probably be an excellent idea. So I think that's something else we might have to resurrect again. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> just thinking, you know, fun. everybody's doing stuff outdoors. You know, there's the outdoor dining, but in the middle of January in New England, you're not space heaters aren't going to help. You know, <laughs> no. no, staying at my no. own house. And, 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 yeah, I, I don't know how you would. I don't think I would go eat outside with a parka on. That's just yeah, no. That's just me. But so virtual a trivia night, absolutely, that would be something I'd be in for. If, if you want a glass of wine or a beer while you're doing it, that's also not a bad thing. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's something we should look into and try to resurrect again. Mm-hmm. Now, what are your plans for Women Aid? Where do you see Women Aid going in the next mm-hmm. five years? I mean, you've grown so much. Yeah. Is there still room for growth? Uh, of course, of course. I know we've talked with the chamber before about potentially partnering with a larger corporation that's part of the chamber and okay. trying to do more events through them um, as opposed to us kind of hosting events. So that's something we can look um, into expanding upon. 
over the next five years. Uh, I think another thing is we do a lot of events um, for families in need, for kids in need. Maybe we should do more events that are kind of, you know, different age groups, um, maybe more in the middle school level, the high school level that kids that age can kind of, you know, volunteer and be a oh, part Oh, so you of. mean have like so the maybe, events themselves geared toward be kind of geared toward the different schoolers. age group might be something to be interesting in. So we, it's not always the parents. A lot more of the younger okay. um, with the ice cream socials and, and everything else and maybe okay. kind of mix it up a little bit and add it into there. Um, well, I'm also thinking the raffles yeah. are a lot of times a, a very targeted adult audience as well. Yep. Yep. And, and that's something you can kind of gear, um, again, kind of get in that wide range and trying to hit the different age groups. There would probably be a big thing for us to do just to kind of branch out and, 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 and try something a little different. So I think that trying to grow and trying to partner up with another corporation or, or organization, um, trying to reach out to different age groups and, and, and really show those age group students that they can volunteer and help as well and not only um, have the event before them. So I think that would be a huge win for us over the next few years. Now, along those lines, do you think it would be feasible for the kids to actually play in the event instead of just having a kid-oriented event? Because like you had just said, that, yeah. you know, giving the kids more power and more authority and decision-making. Yeah, I think that'd be a, you know, a really interesting idea, especially when you, you could partner up with some of the adults if you're trying to work through these meetings okay. and everything else, but kind of have them have more of a, of a say in how to run this and give some, some thoughts and opinions and, mm -hmm. and see what they think. You know, they always say, children are the future. I mean, really, if you can well, start them and working with them at a younger yeah. age, showing them how much you know, they can be a part of, of helping another family, helping another um, community or helping our community really right. and, and running this stuff. It gives them, you know, good leadership skills, good, you know, management skills, um, decision-making and so forth would definitely be something that, that, you know, we should really think about trying to do too. I think it's a great idea. Cause I just keep thinking of a lot of the programs that are going on right now with, you know, the high school students and yep. seeing what high school students can do now. I wouldn't have thought of it back, you know, yeah ancient history when I was in high school it's like I wouldn't have been capable of capable of that so I think it's yeah a, a really I mean kids kids are amazing nowadays especially with technology you know I forgot my, my son had done something was broken on his iPad or something like that and he you know I was like do you need me to help you fix it reset it whatever you need to do and he's just going off <laughs> trying these different things all on his own fixed it himself and moved on and it's something that if you had asked me to do that 25, 30 years ago, I would have laughed if you've expected me because the kids have not even just technology, but, but really taking ownership. They're exposed to a lot more uh, right. good or bad than what they were used to. So they're, they are capable of a lot and we, we should give them a forum to be able to show and grow and, and, and give and really kind of show what they're capable right. of at that point. And kind of focus that energy, you know, instead yeah, of, yeah, instead of, you know, right. achieving that rank in the video game, how about you achieve that rank in, in the community and exactly. help each help other people well and show what an impact it has i mean it, it, it you can really show like look look what you did you helped this family in their time of need and 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 you could feel good about yourself and and it makes a big difference and they will thank you for that and it means something as opposed to my kids do love their video games like everything else but getting them exposed to other stuff is never ever a bad thing and they love to help they love to help my eight-year-olds you know we were doing something in our house and, and knocking something down to, to kind of fix it up. And, and he was jumping right out there. I want to help you. I, I want to do, do this. It. So I know that kids want to help. Yes. They may not tell you that all the time, but they do. So we should well, give as them long a as it's fun so. too, you know, it has to have that element of fun in order for them to, to want to help. Anytime you can work demo day in, in, into a discussion, they're, there they're all, about go. all about that. There you go. I wonder if you could work into a, a woman aid themed event with you know demolition i you know what i'm sure that we could and we would probably have half the boys in town sign up for it and, and you so. know what half the girls too because exactly i know girls would absolutely love to do it too <laughs> including myself so um yep yeah, maybe that's something we'll have to definitely look into now we still have some time left and before yeah. i start throwing random questions at you um sure. is there something that you want to make sure that we mentioned tonight yeah that we're forget that i'm forgetting 
I mean, you know, I, I think I think the biggest thing is, is, is we have these fundraisers and and we have these events. Um, and and I, I don't want to say that, you know, well, I do want to say it, we could always use additional funds and, and donations and help because it seems like the requests are coming in um, more than the funds, especially mm -hmm. recently with COVID. Um, so I think the biggest thing we'd love any help anybody can give us at this point in time. I know we've already kind of stressed that along the way. Um, we try to do whatever we can to, to, we try not to turn people away if we can help it. Um, just because we're, we're, we're really, we're in a tough time and, and, and trying to really reach out and, and help everybody. It, it's it, money, money we have only goes so far. So any additional funds, any different additional help that we can get at this point, um, would be great. And, and again, I've, I've thanked all the businesses at this point that have helped us. I know there's, there's dozens more, um, but I think that's really what I, I'd want to stress at this point in time is that the requests for help are always coming in. They are, they are never stopping. You know, I just, every time you think there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and things are starting to get better, you know, you, you hear more stories. So any help we can get would be great. Speaking of, I mean, we have focused, obviously the elephant in the room is, or it's not even in the room, um, the yeah. COVID <laughs> thing. So, yeah. COVID has impacted our oh, entire yeah. world. Yep. When you first, when Women Aid first started doing the grants, were mm -hmm. you personally kind of surprised and how big of an impact has COVID had on the Burlington community? It, it's been, it's been big. And I think it's, it's all ranges of, of families from all different parts of Burlington, different cultures, different, every, everybody has been impacted by this. And I, I think if you had told me over the course of Women Aid, we've helped 150 families over the span of the 11 years, you know, like $150,000 over those years. Um, wow. If you had told me that more than half would come in this calendar year, I wouldn't have believed you. We, had not, we helped 90 families this year alone wow. um, from the start of March. So 150 families in 11 years, 90 of which from March. I mean, that's, that's, that's huge. That that's, is that's huge. just a huge number. So um, it's, it's been a, it's been a huge impact. I mean, I'm sure people just, you know, around town have seen it. Um, obviously businesses are, are not doing as, as, as well as we would like them to do because, because people can't get in, uh, you know, big, or, or limited with how much they can get in. Right. Um, yeah. It's been a huge impact. It's been huge. Now have, we've talked about several of, the fundraisers that you've done from the potlucks mm -hmm. to the ice cream socials to the the floral assembly you know the i can't even think of the right word now to the wine tasting yeah what has been your personal favorite wow um <laughs> i i can never personally i go to total wine like probably once every month kind of thing i, I love that place um, I love, so I love wine tasting and it's something I enjoy a lot. Um, I will say this, I was pleasantly surprised the bouquet. I had a blast. I really, cool. truly did. Um, that, you know, you, you get to pick where you want to put things and, and somebody's helping you through it. So you never feel like you're alone on it. And, and I have this beautiful centerpiece, which is still sitting in my room, you know, in my house, in my kitchen a week and a half later. Um, I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I, if you couldn't tell over the course of this interview, I'm a very social person by nature. So even the potlucks are something near and dear to me because right. I loved going out and, and just meeting people and socializing with people and, and building a network. You know, okay. um, we had a, a potluck event that, you know, ended up somebody who happened to just show up at that event to just go ended up hosting the next one because they had so much fun. So really you know the potluck still holds something near and dear to my heart but but definitely the wine tasting and, okay. and, and the bouquet have been my favorites recently especially um so far has there been oh, the trivia night was fun i just i had to cut out early so unfortunately oh. i didn't get to win and i'm a very you know competitive Darn. person so I, I felt a little bad about that but that was fun as well now was there like a theme to the trivia night like 80s or movies or you, you know what no and i think the next one we would definitely have to do it because all i can think of is the trivia night what was the they had what was the one they had um through the school systems well, i forgot what theme that was television i think was it was it television? I know I remember dressing up with, with Pac-Man. So I think we're going to have to do. Oh, I think, well, there was an eighties one. Point. I think there was, <clears throat> I remember like a whole bunch of people dressing up like Devo. 
um, at the last one. And then there was one a few years yeah. ago that the table, everybody at the table dressed up as a different Tom Hanks character. Oh, that would be classic. Yeah. So that so was really would, cool. I would, I would definitely think that you would, you would have to do that, whether it's, it's, it's like bands or, or, or fictional movies or something. I don't know. For some reason, Gem and the Holograms kind of sticks in my head, which would be pretty entertaining. But um, oh, yeah, we, I fun. would love to do a theme. I would love to do a theme of some kind. I think that would be something we'd have to look into for the next one. And if you did, you'd have to have like costume uh, prizes for the costume. Oh, best something. costume? Oh, yeah. The whole best thing. costume. Even if it's virtual, you know, hey, you know, you're still just. You're, still you can still be seen and you can exactly. still have fun. So trust me, exactly. you can still dress up. You can still dress up. You can still dress up. So wait, what did you say that you dressed up as? Pac-Man? Uh, so there was, so we had our table and um, we had different Pac-Man characters, whether it was the, the pink one, the okay. you know regular Pac-Man. So we had people yeah. dressed as bananas and cherries, like the different fruits oh, and everything that gosh. you get in Pac-Man. It was, it was pretty awesome but but yeah that 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 was uh i don't know if it's i think it was this year we that we did this so i don't know what the um the theme was again but they were there's always interesting costumes if you do a theme trivia night people well, come out of the woodwork and the names of the co of the teams are oh awesome. i know like, very creative i am running out of questions <laughs> No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, you... it's, it's good to run out of questions with four minutes left. With four minutes left, that's like true. But... Left. So I, I think I think that that that's okay at this point. Um, but but yeah, no, as I'm looking around on the. What is the website? Yep, because right we there. weren't able to get the graphics up. So what? Yeah. So and I'm gonna pull it up on my other screen. So it's um. Yes, you have a lovely blue. So there's two. Right so there's two different ways you can find it. You could do a search um through through facebook and burlington women aid and that'll pop right up there um if you're if you're looking for us um via the web through our website it's it's burlington ma women aid dot wordpress dot com and that's wordpress w-o-r-d-p-r-e-s-s dot -S com um so you can find oh. us that way you can do links um to our newsletter um if you subscribe to our newsletter we do send out our newer events that are coming up Wait, how do you how do you subscribe to the newsletter? Is that on the website? Yeah, it is. If it's on the website and you go about maybe okay. a quarter of the way down on the right hand side, um, it's okay. a su subscribe to our newsletter. So we do send out um, frequent um, updates as to our new events, what's kind of going on. Um, so you can be informed in case that there are some new ones coming out, okay. um, uh, such as the virtual craft night we're doing um, on the seventh um, by Jacqueline McKinnon of Sweet Tea Parties is, is hosting the event. Oh, I know um, her. Yes, Jacqueline <laughs> has been great. So I'm glad I actually mentioned her name. Yeah, and, she, and, and the second event we're doing is actually on the 21st. I think I mentioned the 13th. Okay. So the second event on November 21st is when you're doing um, the wooden box craft. And that you can put, you know, they have different um, jars you can put in there. And you put candles in, you can put um, oh. flowers in, whatever type of arrangement you're kind of looking to do. So that, that's what's upcoming. Plus, of course, um, Melissa O'Dowd is running that holiday wreath fundraiser through Whole Bunch uh, with the profits going to Women Aid from that as well. So you're um, making that sign the wreath? Up is, is soon. Are you designing the wreath and making it kind of like you did the flower arrangement or is it just purchasing a wreath flat out? You know, I, I, I'm going to double check that. I thought it was purchasing the wreath. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to throw um, this at yeah. you, you know. I knew you were going to throw that at me too. Um, I, I believe it's more of the purchasing the wreath. Um, again, just kind of a, a different fundraiser, kind of like the, the raffles that we had in the past. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's not, it's not as, as, as fun as making the flower arrangement, but it is an equally fun thing because I know I hang a wreath up. Um, okay. On my, you know, on your front door, uh, on my front door all, for every Christmas. <laughs> so it, it's definitely been a huge help there too. So, so that that's our upcoming events over the span of the next month. So and I know we had said we used to do three to six. It's definitely it's feeling more really, like eight. <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. That's what you're here it, for. It, it's it, it's definitely a good thing. It's definitely okay. a good thing. And do you need to pre-register for these events? You do. So okay. you can go on to the the Facebook page in there. Um, you you can do a Venmo um, or or a donation there. Okay. State which event you're interested in. Uh, obviously, you can do all of them. You can do one of, of them. You have we to would do all gladly of them. take as many as you would like to do. But yeah, please visit our our Facebook page. 
um, or our webpage, and you can go right through there and, okay. and register. Chris was able to get the, the website up. So thank you, Chris. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I kind of neglected my, you know, producer responsibilities there. Oh, that's, that's but, okay. <laughs> but you we'll know get what? It there. We'll get up there eventually. We are out of time now. Oh, thank you. I so, really appreciate the time here. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that we were able to do like this, you know, hey, schools are hybrid. The show is hybrid. You know, we're, we're adapting not? with the time. We are adapting. We are growing. We are. We can be flexible. So thank you, Megan, very much. And say oh, hi to Corey you, for me, or I could just say hi to Corey I, I right will now. Do. I have a feeling I will have a mountain of text messages to respond back to after this. <laughs> well, thank you for you know not texting while we're talking. I, I, I so know the rules. I, I, have I appreciate that. Conferences. I know the rules. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank you. And I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening. Um, hopefully, you are motivated to help your friend, help your neighbor, and help out Women Aid and our community. So have a wonderful week, and I will see you around town. Good night.